Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name is Ashton and I make face videos here on YouTube. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I study using the Blue Letter Bible. So if you're interested in seeing that, then just keep on watching. I can't even explain it, nah, nah. Maybe it's the way you look in my eyes. How I feel is beyond words can describe. All right guys, so we are taking a break in our scheduled programming um, of Soul Study Sunday to throw in this video. Well, I guess it's not really a break because it does have stuff to do with studying. So um, I wanted to make this video, one, because I've seen that a lot of people are starting to use the Blue Letter Bible and so I wanted to kind of show you guys how I use it um, and all of the features that are there. Um, and that are available to you if you decide to use it. Um, and for two, I also wanted to use it because, again, biblical literacy is really important to me here on my channel. Um, and there's a difference between reading the word and studying the word of God. And so I think that there are a lot of us, I've gotten a lot of comments, um, just over the years that I have been doing Bible study videos, um, where people feel, um, like they the world the word has been revealed to them differently when they come and they study um or when they come and they watch these videos um or that they didn't understand something before and they understand it now when i explain it a certain way um and i think that a part of that is just god gifting me um as a teacher and being able to explain his word but i think the other part of it is that a lot of us are just reading the word um and then we don't understand it because we aren't taking the time to really study the word what it means the context and things like that and so i wanted to uh, for this video show you guys how i study um how i prepare for videos specifically um so that you guys can also replicate that in your own time um so that you can also receive that revelation and so that's what we're going to do today um so we are going to be using the blue letter bible i'm going to be doing it on my ipad so that you can see like the notes that i'm taking um so i will be using the good notes app um i have the first generation apple pencil um and i don't know which ipad i have but it's an older one um so let's go ahead and I'm going to put what I'm doing on the screen. And just a disclaimer, I am sick or I'm like getting over, trying to get over a cold. So I'm sorry if I sound like really nasally or my voice is just annoying. But I wanted to make sure that I got this video out for you guys. Um, so we're just going to deal with it at this point. So the first thing that you want to do when you go to your Blue Letter Bible app um, or when you're even studying in general is choosing a passage of scripture. So this can either look like a full chapter or it can look like a section of scripture. Um, for this example, we're going to look at the fruit of the spirit, um, but specifically verses 16 through 23 of Galatians chapter 5. Um, so I'm just going to go to Galatians chapter five um, and you can also change um, the version that you want to read it in so you just go to bibles um, so it's currently in the king james version but i'm going to do the new king james version and then you can also do parallel um, bibles as well um, for some reason it's off on the ipad on my ipad i'm not really sure but i can also show you what it looks like on my phone um, so you want to pick the version that you want to read it in. Um, and so I recommend reading um, whatever passage of, passage of scripture that you choose in at least three different versions. My preferred versions are the New King James Version, the Modern English Version, the Christian Standard Bible, um, the New Living Translation, and then sometimes just for like some razzle dazzle um, or just like to switch it up. I use the Message Bible as well, um, but the Message Bible is not an actual translation of the Bible, um, but it is a paraphrasing. It is a paraphrasing. So if you want, I can make um, a whole separate video about different biblical translations um, and which ones are the best if you 
are looking for an accurate translation of the Bible, um, things like the NIV version. Um, there are actually multiple instances in the NIV version where verses are missing. Um, so that's a whole nother thing, but those are some of the versions that I recommend um, or that I choose to read the Bible in. So first we're gonna start with just reading the scripture. Um, so verses 16 through 23 it says i say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery fornication uncleanness lewdness idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, decisions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. So that is the passage of scripture that we're gonna be reading. So my first time reading it, I'm just gonna go right through it, right? I'm just gonna read straight through it. And then I'm going to pick a, another version of the Bible to read it in. So this time I'm going to do the Christian Standard Bible. I'm gonna go back. Um, and this time when I read it, I'm going to highlight verses that stand out to me. So the cool thing about the Blue Letter Bible is that you can edit your highlights and you can edit kind of like what they mean, the colors of them, and you can label it. So you could label um, whatever colors you want it to be. I know there are some people who do like a lot of like highlighting and they highlight the names of God or they highlight um, specific like actions that we're supposed to do um, or they'll, they'll highlight things that are about God and things that are about us. Um, I can link some videos like that in the description box below. I personally don't have like a specific highlight routine or you know certain colors that I use for certain things. I just pick whatever color. Um, I like so this time I'm gonna read through it again and I'm gonna highlight things that stand out to me. So now I'm reading in the Christian Standard Bible and it says, I say then, walk by the Spirit and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh. So that stands out to me um, because it's interesting that if I walk by the Spirit, it says I will certainly not carry out the desires of the flesh. That certainly really stands out to me for the flesh desires what is against the spirit and the spirit desires what is against the flesh these are opposed to each other so that you don't do what you want but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law now the works of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality moral impurity promiscuity idolatry sorcery hatred strife jealousy outbursts of anger selfish ambitions decisions factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. I am warning you about these things as I warned you before that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So of course that stands out to me, the works of the flesh. So I'm going to highlight that um, and that goes from verse 19 to 21 and it's going to highlight that whole thing. Um, and then it says, verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. And so I'm also going to highlight that as well. And I'm going to highlight verses 22 and 23. So now I can go back and I can see what I have highlighted um, in the Christian Standard Bible. And then, like I said, I try to read it in three different versions. So I'll go back and choose another version, um, but I don't have all the versions um, that I like to read downloaded here on the iPad. 
So um, just for the sake of video, let's just pretend like we read it in another version. Step one is choosing a passage of scripture. Step two um, is reading that in multiple versions. So again, like I said, I like to read the New King James Version, the New Living Translation, the Christian Standard Bible, the Modern English Version, and then also sometimes the Message Version. Um, and then step three is highlighting any words or phrases that stand out to you. Um, and then step four is to use your interlinear or concordance feature for the Greek or Hebrew definitions of the words. So if you're in the Old Testament, then you're going to be looking at the Hebrew words and definitions. If you're in the New Testament, then you're going to be looking at the Greek words and um, definitions. So um, let me show you how you would find that. So we're going to start with verse 16. Um, it says, I say then walk by the spirit and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh. So in order for this video to not be super long, I'm just going to go through verse 16. And so because that's something that stands out to me, that is something that I will put in my notes. And then I'm going to look at the words that stand out to me. So um, I clicked on the verse. And then I'm going to click on interlinear or concordance. And this is going to show me the Greek text. It's going to show me the Greek interlinear, which I usually don't use. Um, and then it's going to show me the words, in, like the root word um, in the Greek. It's going to show me the Strong's concordance. Um, reference and then it's also going to show me the word in English and it will also show me how to pronounce the word right so the first thing that stood out to me um, was the word walk it says but I say to you walk by the spirit so what does it mean to walk by the spirit so what I'm going to do is click on the Greek word and then it's going to show me the word written in Greek it's going to show me the transliteration and that's where you can um hear how to pronounce the word um it shows you the pronunciation the part of speech so that's a verb it's also going to show you the root words which you can also do like a deeper study in and then it's going to show you the outline of biblical usage now this is where i usually get the majority of like my definitions from um and so the one thing that you want to keep in mind when you're reading this um, the outline of biblical usage is the context for the scripture that you're reading it in, right? Because the word can have different meanings depending on the context. And so you don't want to take a definition and apply it to a certain context um, if it was used in a different way. So you want to make sure that you're using the definition that goes with the context of the word because a lot of times the Bible um, or the word can be used um, in different places in the Bible and be... Um, the author is using it to mean something different so in this case um it says to walk so to make one's way progress to make due use of opportunities so that's one way that this particular word is used um in the bible and then the second way that it's used in the bible um is to live to regulate one's life to conduct oneself to pass one's life and for this context where Paul is saying walk by the spirit, that makes sense for this context. So regulate your life by the spirit. Conduct yourself according to the spirit. Um, and so that's what I would write down for the definition. And you can write down as many as you want. And then you can also write down um, the Greek word if you want, um, which I do sometimes. And then there's also more specific definitions. Um, so it says to tread all around, to walk, um, and then figuratively to live, deport oneself, to follow. Um, and so I also sometimes get definitions from there. And then you have the Greek lexicon, and then you have the concordance as well, where you can see um, where else this word was used in the New Testament. So that's how you would find the definitions of the words um, and then you would just go back. Sorry, I always mess that up. Um, so when you're in the interlinear or concordance, you can press the back arrow in the upper right hand corner to go back immediately to this area. 
and then you can just go through all of the words so like for me um i would look for the definition of walk um i will also look for the definition of desire um flesh um, and so I would just go through and anything that stands out to me, anything that helps me further understand what Paul is trying to say in the scripture, um, is what I would write down the definitions of. Um, I also like to ask myself questions, right? So he says, walk in the spirit. Why should I walk in the spirit? And he answers that because then you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, right? And so when I'm going through life and I'm like, okay, how can I not fulfill the lust of my flesh? I remember, okay, when I was studying Galatians 5, Paul said to walk in the spirit, right? And so asking yourself questions for me really helps so that when I get in those life situations where I need the scriptures that I'm studying, because we're not studying scripture for no reason, right? We're studying scripture so that when life situations happen, we can then apply the scripture, right? So. I need to ask myself the right questions while I'm studying it so that I can apply it. Not so that it's head knowledge, but so that it's heart application, okay? So I would ask myself questions like that, like why should I walk in the spirit? Because then I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Um, another thing that stood out to me in verse 17, you know, the spirit and the flesh are in direct opposition of one another. Why is that? Um, and the other thing that um, I didn't start with saying was, of course, we always want to make sure that we're praying before we start studying um, and that we're really asking the Holy Spirit to illuminate things for us and to reveal things and to help guide our interpretation so that we are interpreting what we're reading correctly so that we can also have correct application, right? It's the same thing with sports when they say, you know, practice makes perfect. Um, and then some coaches say that that's not true, but perfect practice makes perfect because how you practice is how you're going to perform in the same way. If we do not have accurate interpretation in our study time, we will not have accurate application in real life. So again, that's why I go through um, and I look at the definitions of the words because a lot of times we will apply our current definitions of words today um, to what the writers are saying and it wasn't the way that they used words or it wasn't the way that things were defined back then. So we want to make sure that we're looking at the words in their original context and getting their original meaning. So again, the first thing that I do is choose a passage of scripture. Um, the second thing is read it in multiple versions. The third is highlighting and underlining. Um, and then the fourth thing is that I use the interlinear slash concordance feature um, to find the Greek or Hebrew definitions of the words. And then the fifth thing that I do is use the cross-reference feature. So we're still looking at verse 16. Um, and so we have the Bible comparison, and this is where you can see the verse in as many different translations as you want to. Um, so that's very helpful, especially if you're looking at a specific verse versus a complete passage of scripture. So I can see the different translations there. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> and then we have the cross references. Um, and so this is where you can look at um, the different parts of the scripture, it breaks it down and it shows you where these words or these phrases come up again in um, other parts of the Bible. So when I click on the word walk, these are some of the scriptures that come up that are cross references. So Galatians 5.25, Galatians 6.8, Romans 8.1, um, verse 4, 5, just pretty much all of Romans 8. Um, first Peter 1 22 so they these are basically um, like supporting scriptures or supporting text for the thoughts that is being portrayed here in the scripture so for example um, in for the word walk first Peter 1 22 comes up it says since you have purified yourselves by your obedience to the truth so that you show sincere brotherly love for each other from a pure heart love one another constantly that's an example of how we would walk by the Spirit so it's supporting um, the original verse that we're looking at, verse 16. 
So these kind of verses kind of answer the questions, um, well, how do I do that? Or why should I do that? Um, or things like that. And so that's what you would use the cross, cross reference for um, if you're wondering, okay, I hear the instruction, how do I live that out? Um, and one of the things that's really important for you to know when you're studying the scripture um, and when it comes to your interpretation of the scripture is that the Bible will always prove the Bible, right? There are no contradictions in the word of God. And if you um, feel like it's con contradicting itself, um, then that's a problem with your interpretation because the Bible cannot lie. It is not false. It is not, um, there are no errors in it. Um, and so that's a whole nother thing um, that we're gonna get into and in something that I have coming soon. Um, but I say all that to say that scripture interprets scripture. So if you are not understanding a specific scripture, use the cross reference feature to find other scriptures that will help you understand it, right? And you wanna make sure that you're doing this first before you go to commentary, before you go to Google, use the Bible to explain the Bible first, okay? So that is the um, cross reference feature. And then the last thing that I do is just summarize my learning. Well, the second to last thing that I do is summarize my learning. Um, so what stood out to me? What are the application points? Um, what was I, what do I feel like Paul was trying to convey? Um, and as someone who makes Bible study videos here on YouTube, as someone who teaches, um, this is really important to me because this, um, helps me form into words like what I'm going to say here on YouTube, um, or things like that. And so taking the time to write it down really helps me make sure that I understand it. Um, and then I go back and check what my summary is, what my interpretation is, what my application is, um, and I go back to the text and I say, okay, is this accurate compared to the text? Because a lot of times we finish with um, what we believe to have understood about the text um, and we don't go back and check it. And a lot of times we put in our own biases um, or because of our own experiences, we add things in that the text is not exactly saying. So you wanna make sure that after you've written down your interpretation, your application, whatever the Lord has revealed to you um, during your time of studying, you go back and check it with the text, okay? And then the last thing that you want to do or that you can do is read commentary. So again, you can do that in the Blue Letter Bible app. Um, so under cross-reference, there is text commentaries. And so um, this is just a lot of different like sermon notes by different people. So you have Chuck Smith, David Geisick, um, Matthew Henry, um, C.H. Spurgeon. And so a lot of these people, um, you can Google um, and kind of trying to figure out where their beliefs, where their theology lies um, to see kind of uh, who you want to study or if you want to pick certain people that you enjoy the most. Um, I don't, not really at that place where I have certain uh, theologians that I uh, look for, um, but I kind of just peruse through there. So for example, if we just start with Chuck Smith, because he's just at the top, and we go through his verse by verse study, um, then you can kind of read this. So let's try to find verse 16 and just see what he says. Okay. So here that is. So he says, so Paul here exhorts us to walk in the spirit and to live after the spirit or on the spirit side of our lives. Now man was created and by God as a living spirit, created by God in fellowship with God. God is a superior trinity, man is an inferior trinity. The superior trinity is made up of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The inferior trinity is spirit, soul, and body of a man. And it is in the realm of the spirit where man meets God. That's where I come in touch with God. That's where God touches me and my spirit in the realm of the spirit. His spirit bears witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. Um, so, yeah, so they go on to add a bunch of stuff, which is why um, a lot of times we can 
tend to rely on someone else explaining something for us um, or interpreting something for us but a lot of times or not a lot of times these are just human people who are doing the same thing that we're doing studying the same text and they may have been doing it longer um, and they may have more experience and they more may have more historical knowledge but again they're humans who um, are prone to error so um, you just want to make sure that you are cautious about what you're reading um, how often you're reading it and making sure that you have a steady foundation um, of your own studying before you look at someone else's studying um, and that's why a lot of times I kind of struggle um, with teaching here on YouTube or doing Bible studies here on YouTube because um, I just want to make sure that you guys um, aren't just coming here to hear what I have to say um, but that you guys are also studying it for yourself um, because it's always important that we eat food for ourselves not the regurgitated food of other people right because they've had the time to digest it and get all the nutrients and they're just giving it back to you um, and so you want to be able to get the nutrients yourself from the word amen amen so let's run through the seven steps um, one more time so the first is to pick a passage of scripture the second is to read it in multiple versions the third is to highlight and underline any words or phrases that stand out to you the fourth is to use the interlinear concordance for the Hebrew or Greek definition the fifth is to use the cross-reference feature the sixth is to summarize your learning application things like that in your own words and then to check that with the text one more time and then the seventh thing is to use commentaries um, if you feel that it's necessary or you want to go deeper in your learning so I hope that this video was helpful for you um, I would definitely recommend using the blue letter Bible app to help you deepen your studying of the word um, and yeah, if you guys have any questions about the app or just about how I study in general, um, definitely let me know in the comment section below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.